Good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Reflective Hour. I'm your host, Tammy Tony Butler. But we all know who the real host of this show is, and that's Christ. The bearer of light to a dark world. The spirit of truth to those that need it. To those that need a savior. Someone to break every chain. Someone to bring hope and peace to a place in their life that's seen anything but that. Will you join me today as we reflect together, as we walk on paths of righteousness for his name's sake, as we seek his truth in the word and dive into it so it can be our guide, our lamppost, through the darkness of this world. How great it is to have a lamp that never runs out of light. A wellspring of living water to drink from that never runs dry. There'll never be drought where Christ is. For even in times of famine, you will see his glory when you change your perspective and look to the light of his word as your guide to the truth, despite what your current circumstances dictate in your life. Will you seek the well? Will you seek that wellspring of living water and see what his truth reveals? Or will you seek the world? That's really the question of today for us as believers, as those that are walking in the light and refusing to partner with the darkness. How is your journey going today? Do you want to see his goodness? in those dry places of your life? Do you want to see feast where there's been famine? Do you want joy where there's been sadness and hopelessness? Listen to this episode as we dive in to his word, his truth to be our God. Holy Spirit, come. Just bask in that peace that surpasses all understanding. Just drink from it. Refill your spiritual tanks because many of you have run dry. And it's difficult to pour into others if your well is dry. I lift you up today with his presence, with his power, and with the reality of his word. There's joy, even in the dark times. Let's look at his word. Psalm 16. And I will be reading out of the Life Application Study Bible, the New International Version. Psalm 16. The theme is the joys and benefits of a life lived in compassion with God. We enjoy these benefits now and eternally. Author David. Keep me safe, O God. For in you, I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom all is my delight. 
the sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion in my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I've set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the grave. Nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Just let that marinate. His word of truth. His word of truth. He will not let us die a spiritual death. He will set us free. We only need to seek the truth in his word. Mikkum comes from a term that may mean to cover. It could mean a covering of the lips, a silent prayer, or a prayer that someone might be covered with protection. Cover can also mean atone for. Mikkum may be a psalm of atonement. It is human nature to make our own plans and then ask God to bless them instead. We should seek God's will first. By constantly thinking about the Lord and his way of living, we will gain insights that will help us make right decisions and live the way God desires. Communicating with God allows him to counsel us and give us wisdom. And I'm just reading in the notes of of the study Bible, which is one reason I like it. By saying that he will not be shaken, David was talking about the unique sense of security felt by believers. God does not exempt believers from day-to-day circumstances of life. Believers and unbelievers alike experience pain, trouble, and failure at times. It talks more of that in Matthew 5.45. Unbelievers have a sense of hopelessness about life and confusion over their true purpose on earth. Those who seek God, however, can move ahead confidently with what they know is right and important in God's eyes. They know that God will keep them from being moved off his chosen path. This psalm is often called a messianic psalm because it is quoted in the New Testament as referring to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Both Peter and Paul quoted from this psalm when speaking of Christ's bodily resurrection. David's heart was glad. He had found the secret to joy. Listen, this is very important. True joy is far deeper than happiness. We can feel joy in spite of our deepest troubles. Happiness is temporary because it is based on external circumstances. But joy is lasting because it is based on God's presence within us. His truth is unfallible truth. As we contemplate his daily presence, we will find contentment. As we understand the future he has for us, we will experience joy. Don't base your life on circumstances, but base them on God. David stated confidently that God would not leave him in the grave. Many people fear death because they can neither control nor understand it. As believers, we can be assured that God will not forget us when we die. 
He will bring us to life again, to live with him forever. This provides real security. When I look at that and listen to what the word is speaking to me, what Christ is speaking to me, we can be alive, but walking around as if we are dead. We all fall short of the glory of the Lord. We are all sinners with our own crosses to bear. But we do not need to die in our circumstance. Christ died so we could be set free. We can call upon him at any moment, and he will deliver us out of Egypt. He will be there with us in the middle of whatever storm we're facing. But often, we don't want to call on him for help because we believe that we're too dirty, too full of shame. How could he, a righteous God, come dwell with us mere sinners? But look what he did in the past. Jesus dined with sinners. Jesus met the woman at the well. He met her in her circumstance, where she was at that time. She did not feel clean enough. That's why she went to the well in the heat of the day. She didn't even believe she could be around others. She was even ridiculed and persecuted by others. How many of you feel like you're ridiculed and persecuted by others? How many of you walk that path to where you believe that no one sees you? that no one's there with you. But I can tell you Christ is there. He is there with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Seek him and seek his glory. Seek his peace that surpasses all understanding. His unfallible truth in the word of God. Seek it. Seek what he is saying to you and what he has for you. Seek his promises. Seek his truth. He will guide you. He will keep you. He will strengthen you. As you strive to walk along that path of righteousness, of peace, of joy, despite your circumstances, choose joy. Fight your way through the darkness to hope. Live from a place of hope with a fully surrendered heart to Christ. Let him alone guide you and keep you and strengthen you during these dark times. He's our light in a dark world. He's our strength in the middle of the storm. He's our steadfast anchor of hope in a dark world. He will bless you and keep you and strengthen you. You're never too dirty to call out to God. If that was the case, I wouldn't be sitting here now, for I have sinned. But he set me free of all of that, of the shame, the guilt, the fear, and the regret. He can set you free too. Bask in his glory. Bask in his goodness. Despite the day you're at, maybe you're stuck in traffic. Maybe you're trying to remember that you're a righteous person and not uh, retaliate with your tongue. Taming the tongue is the hardest thing that we have to do. Maybe you're at the grocery store wondering how you're going to buy groceries and feed your family and which credit card is not maxed out. Maybe you're wondering how you're going to pay your mortgage. What you're going to do. How will you survive another day? How will you fake it till you make it another day? You won't do life in your strength, but you can do it in his. Seek the wellspring of living water. Seek Christ. He's waiting. Like he was waiting for the woman at the well. For the man of Bethesda. He's waiting on you. Seek him. Seek his truth and the glory that this day has to bring, the hope that this day has to bring. Draw from his wellspring of living and never ever 
thirsty. There's hope. There's life. You don't need to die. You can live even in the darkness of your past. Don't let it define you. Instead, say no more. I'm going to walk as a victor, victorious over sin, victorious over the chains of the past. And I break off and bind every negative spirit that is attached to your life. Every negative word ever spoken to you, I break it off in the name of Jesus. I call for truth and peace, tranquility, love, joy, hope. I break off every spirit of infirmary and bind it in the name of Jesus. You will walk full of joy, full of peace this day. And you will carry out your kingdom assignment and your purpose. Walk in his glory. Walk in his power. Walk in his anointing and strength. Draw from the wellspring. And never, ever thirst again. That's today's episode of Reflective Hour. Is Evans. Let it seek in to every crevice of your being. Let it be your God. Let it strengthen you in challenging times.